we have cops that are murdering people. And that's an issue that needs to be addressed. To me, he was an athlete who really understood what was going on in our country. Just a few years ago, Colin Kaepernick was arguably a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. It looked like he was going to be one of the best in the game. On the biggest stage in sports, with millions of eyes watching, that iconic image, a lone player protesting during the national anthem. The first thing I thought was, this is going to be a big deal. And he took a need for something bigger than himself. I'm going to continue to stand with the people that are being oppressed. Black lives matter! As the country faces a moment of reckoning, a history of racial injustice, sparking renewed calls for real progress. No justice! No peace! A 2020 reality seeded in Kaepernick's 2016 outcry. He's receiving heavy boos here. Amidst a torrent of hate, his was a towering act of defiance. That's a total disrespect of everything that we stand for. A message rippling around the world to this day. Justice. Don't apologize. Give Colin Kaepernick a job back. Tonight, inside the saga that defined a star's career. This stand wasn't for me. And turned a quarterback into the conscience of a generation. Colin Kaepernick was born in Milwaukee to a, a white mother and a black father. His mother was only 19 at the time. She put him up for adoption. He was adopted by a white couple. They ended up moving out to California. And around that time, he realized he looked different from other people. But the thing with Colin Kaepernick in California was, in sports, in playing sports, he really found himself. He's a terrific athlete. In high school, he wanted to play football. And Nevada, Reno offers him a scholarship. Kaepernick, touchdown, Wolfpack! We knew he was going to be a coveted draft pick, and he was. Drafted in the second round by the San Francisco 49ers, and all of a sudden, the 2012 season, Kaepernick is taking the 49ers all the way to the Super Bowl. The Kaepernick's in for the touchdown! Wow, did he get there in a hurry! He's clearly one of the future stars of the league, but he's still a black man in America. And he's keenly aware of the fact that despite all of his successes, that he's looked at differently in this country. And then he sees the death of Alton Sterling and Eric Garner, Freddie Gray. It was that moment that the light bulb went off for him and he wanted to make some sort of statement about what was going on in the world. And he decided that he would sit during the national anthem as a form of protest. And that was a big surprise. He immediately said it was because of police brutality and because of his concern about how black men were being treated. And then the next week, the kneeling. I can't look in the mirror and see other people dying on the street that should have the same opportunities that I've had and say, you know what? I can live with myself because I can't if I just watch. All of a sudden, it became a, a point of, of, of controversy. I don't think it helps the cause any. You have to stand up there with your team and, and, uh, and understand that it's this game and what's going on around the country is bigger than just you. You're concerned that it's, can, it can be seen as a blanket indictment against law enforcement in general? Uh, as far as what? I don't really understand well, what you're about trying to get people at. People getting murdered by police. I mean, are, do you think that it seems as sort of an indictment against police? Uh, there is police brutality. Yeah. Uh, people of color have been targeted by police. His message was hijacked, and it became about everything except what he was protesting. And he's receiving heavy boos here. Colin made it very clear from the beginning that his protest was not about the military, it was not about the flag, it was not about the anthem, it was not about anything except racial inequality and police brutality against people of color. I think a lot of guys um, didn't understand. Then there were other guys that were totally on board. One person who decidedly was not on board was Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. He said this on a radio show. I think it's a terrible thing. Maybe you should find a country that works better for him. Let him try. It won't happen. And by this time, it seemed like everything was seemingly adding fuel to the fire of these protests. Like, for example, President Obama was asked about Kaepernick's kneeling during the G20 summit. He's exercising his constitutional right to make a statement. I think there's a long history of sports figures 
doing so. You think about Jesse Owens back when he was running in the Olympics, protesting uh, Adolf Hitler and what was happening in Germany. And then you move on to the 60s, an explosive time. You talk about Bill Russell standing up for the rights of black people. You talk about Muhammad Ali refusing to go to the Vietnam War. And then there was John Carlos and Tommy Smith, that photo seen around the world. It's been 52 years since I moved to that podium and made a statement that banned me from track and field internationally for the rest of my life. Let me put into context for you the situation around John Carlos and Tommy Smith. We're talking the 60s. Massive unrest here in America over civil rights. Martin Luther King is killed. Malcolm X is killed. This was a moment where the whole world was watching the Olympics almost as a diversion to the crises that were going on here in America. And Tommy Smith and John Carlos raising their fists on that podium rocked the world. They stood for something they believed in, knowing that there would be blowback across this country. The job I had before I left, I lost. So I sacrificed what I had to make known to those who are watching the need to uh, provide a better system to live in. 50 years later, Colin Kaepernick in many ways made that same sacrifice. So after the 2016 season, Colin had an option year on his contract, and the 49ers had made the decision that they were going to move in another direction at the quarterback position. So Colin asked for his release, and he did not find another taker. Do you believe Colin Kaepernick was blacklisted by the NFL? No question. Without a doubt. Owners are, are concerned about one thing, and that's the bottom line. As a black athlete, you have a very limited voice. Your voice is to sell products. And when you have angry fans, and you have skittish sponsors, and the ratings have dropped, they're going to take note of that. You've got a league that's 70% black, and over the years, many black players have said, we want to be outspoken on different issues concerning what's happening in our society. But the NFL typically until recent years has said, we're not about that. And then here comes Colin Kaepernick. And just with one simple gesture, he turns that all on its head. You forget that the game is just a part, small part of our life. And the key word is game. But the true reality of it all is that we're all human beings at the end of the day. Colin Kaepernick's protests were focused on police brutality and racial injustice. How much money you make, how much fame you have, doesn't shield you from that. And that was the case with Michael Bennett back in 2017. The arrest taking place down on the ground. The first thing people think of when they think about African Americans most of the time is them being criminals or them being thugs. Michael Bennett's in Vegas for a boxing match, and police are responding to an active shooter call. So they go to the casino where Bennett is. They mistakenly think he's somehow involved. They end up tackling him, pinning him to the ground, and handcuffing him. You're on the ground. What's going through your mind? If I make one wrong move, I'll never see my kids again. I'll never see my wife again. You start to question your, your livelihood. You start to question uh, your humanity. You start to question if you're going to even exist anymore. Some of the voices had died down around the protest movement against police brutality. And, and this video sort of put the discussion back on the table. It brought back this idea that Kaepernick was talking about. See what happens to black people in America every single day? Collins stopped talking publicly once he was no longer on a roster. And so these players were conflicted about what do we do? So you had some who continued on with kneeling, not only in support of Colin, but in support of human rights. I got a daughter. She's going to have to live in this world. As a whole and as a team, we came together and felt like it was the right thing. Did you ever worry that by taking that stand that you might get cut? I wasn't really scared of losing my job because at the end of the day, I was able to look my family in the eye and tell them that I stood on my principles. The moment where a, a, an ember, a tiny little smoking ember, is literally ignited into a forest fire is the day that Donald Trump goes to Alabama. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that s off the field right now, out, he's fired. To tell somebody to put a, a muzzle on us and shut us up, right? Because to him and his mind that we're animals, right? 
guys were, were torn up. I mean, grown men were, were, were crying because he's our president. He represents all of us. And for him to say and call one of us an SOB, and really he's talking to all of us when he said that, and that's when you saw the mass kneeling, the mass protest. When we took the field, we were on a knee and guys were praying, guys were locked in, holding arms. And I think we just stuck together. And, and that was a part for me um, that was very uplifting. At that point, the kneeling controversy was the number one story in the country because the president had made it that. The NFL decided to pass a ruling that basically banned kneeling. It said, you can't kneel, and if you want to protest, you can stay in the locker room. We want people uh, to be respectful to national anthem. They never enforced it, which was interesting, because what was the point of doing it then? Was it simply to try and placate the president? We hadn't heard Colin Kaepernick's name for a while. Until now, the killing of George Floyd. Up next, thousands across the country kneel in the middle of American streets. I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag. You are part of the problem. How the death of George Floyd sparked new debate inside the NFL and may change the game forever. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.